Dear students, in this session, we will be discussing about the process, characteristics and weaknesses of an approach followed in the management process called the Management by Objectives or the MBO. Introduction By using your planning and organizing skills in the workplace, you will get a lot more work done, be able to meet deadlines and to prove to your boss and colleagues that you can do it. If you plan and organize a job well, it will be productive and positive experience for everyone. Every job requires planning and organizing that is specific to the job to be performed. It needs to have an objective that can lead to the successful execution of the job. Let's know about management by objective in this session. Management by objectives. Management by objectives is one of the most modern approaches to management which was introduced by Peter Drucker in the book The Practice of Management in 1954. Later, the concept was elaborated by various writers like George S. Odeon, Edward Skelts, Carroll, Toshi and Douglas McGregor. Peter Drucker mentioned that what the business enterprise needs is a principle of management that will give full scope to individual strength and responsibility and at the same time provide a common direction to vision and effort, establish teamwork and harmonize the goals of the individuals with the common organizational goals. Management by Objectives or MBO is now practiced around the world. Yet, despite its wide application, it is not always clear what is meant by MBO. MBO is difficult to define. Organizations use it in different ways and for different reasons. According to George S. Odeon, management by objectives can be described as a process whereby the superior and the subordinate managers of an organization jointly identify its common goals, define each individual's major area of responsibility in terms of results and use these measures as guides for operating the unit and assessing the contribution of each of its members. In the words of Koontz, O'Donnell and Wellrich, MBO is comprehensive managerial system that integrates many key managerial activities in a systematic manner, consciously directed towards the effective and efficient achievement of organizational and individual objectives. Features of Management by Objectives MBO. Based on the definitions of MBO, its features can be identified as follows. MBO as a philosophy. MBO is a philosophy of management. It is more than a set of techniques. It emphasizes on what is to achieve, not how to achieve. It suggests how the best use of available resources may be done to achieve the expected objectives. Peter Drucker writes, MBO may be properly called a philosophy of management because it rests on a concept of human action behavior and motivation. Finally, it applies to every manager, whatever his level or function, and to every organization, whether large or small. Second, MBO is an approach. MBO is an approach to management. Approach refers to various tools or techniques used in order to achieve the objectives. MBO introduces several new techniques of management. It also enhances the relevance and utility of existing ones. It is thus a joint application of a number of principles and techniques. It works as an integrating device. Many principles and techniques of planning and control are used in organization in the normal situation, but in MBO, the focus is more on these techniques. Third, organizational and individual goals, determination. MBO is a participating and interactive process whereby superiors and subordinates jointly determine common objective for the organization and also define each individual's area of work and responsibility. Fourth, MBO emphasizes participative set, objectives that is tangible, verifiable and measurable. Cretaner writes, the common denominator that has made MBO approach so popular in both management theory and practice is the emphasis on objectives that are both measurable and participative set. Fifth, 
MBO is a top-down or a bottom-up approach in results management which aims at optimum use of organizational resources. Thus, MBO is a systematic and rational technique that allows management to attain maximum results from available resources. Not only this, it also allows the subordinate plenty of room to make creative decisions on his own. 6. MBO has multiple uses. MBO is a way of promoting managerial self-control and it applies to total management system. It has multiple uses. There are various managerial subsystems that can be integrated with MBO process. They include performance appraisal, design of organizational structures, management development programs, organizational change programs and budgeting. 7. MBO has some relationship with every management technique and is a universal tool. In fact, MBO provided the stimulus for the introduction of new techniques of management and enhances the utility of the existing ones. MBO is the joint application of number of principles and techniques. It works as an integrating device. It is a valuable management tool for profit as well as non-profit organizations. It is a simple, non-technical operational management approach which can be applied to every type of organization. 8. MBO as a performance appraisal and review As a performance appraisal and review, MBO is intended to measure and judge performance, to relate individual performance to organizational goals and to foster the increasing competence and growth of the subordinates. 9. A comprehensive system approach MBO has become a comprehensive system. It considers both economic and human aspects of an organization. It applies to managers and employees in any kind of organization at all levels and in all functional areas. Koons and Vherich write MBO to be effective has to be viewed as comprehensive system. It must be considered as a way of managing and not an addition to the managerial job. 10. Guidelines for Appropriate System MBO has a thrust achieved on objectives. Therefore, it provides guidelines for appropriate systems and procedures. Resources allocation, delegation of authority, etc. are determined on the basis of objectives. Similarly, reward and punishment system is attached with the achievement of objectives. Finally, we can say that the salient features of MBO are Cascading of organizational goals and objectives, specific objectives for each team or group and member, participative decision-making process, explicit time period deadlines, and performance evaluation and feedback. Process of Management by Objectives, MBO. MBO programs can vary enormously. Some are designed for use in a subunit, while others are used for organization as a whole. The particular methods and approaches that managers use in an MBO program will differ. There also may be wide differences in emphasis. Therefore, the MBO process requires rigorous analysis, clarity and balance of objectives and participation of managers with accountability for results. This process includes the following steps. Setting of objectives the first step of MBO process is to establish verifiable objectives for the organization for various positions at various levels. Without having a clear objective, no group or individual can perform effectively or efficiently. One of the major criteria to set clear objectives is the scope of measuring it. Therefore, objectives should be set in such a way that they provide a clear direction to the people who have to contribute and perform for achievement of the same. It is always desirable to have a participatory approach to set objectives. However, management aspirations and expectations should be kept in view while adopting a participatory approach to set objectives. Setting precise, measurable and well-defined objectives is indeed a difficult task. It requires an intelligent input from superiors and practice and team effort on the part of the subordinates. The objective defined in an MBO should be verifiable, indicate the time frame within which they are to be achieved, 
इंडिकेट एसोसिएटेड कॉस्ट इन वर्ल्ड इंडिकेट क्वांटिटी एंड क्वालिटी एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द एक्सपेक्टेड अचीवमेंट्स हेल्प इन प्रमोटिंग पर्सनल एंड प्रोफेशनल ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट गेट ड्यूली कम्युनिकेटेड टू ऑल हु आर कंसर्न विद इट अलाइन शॉर्ट टर्म ऑब्जेक्टिव टू मीडियम एंड लॉन्ग टर्म ऑब्जेक्टिव सेकेंड की रिजल्ट एरियाज organizational objectives and planning premises together provide the basis for identification of key result areas key result areas are derived from the expectations of various stakeholders and indicate priorities for organizational performance they indicate top management perspectives for the future and the present state of health of the organization these are the areas in reference to which organizational health may be measured or appraised for for example profitability market standing innovation productivity etc these areas are not the same for every organization they may differ from organization to organization depending on various internal and external environmental factors third setting of subordinate objectives organizational objectives are achieved through individuals therefore every individual must know in advance what he is expected to achieve objectives for each subordinate should be set in consultation between that subordinate and his or her supervisor a degree of recycling is required in setting of objectives this means that a degree of interaction consultation and discussion among top level managers department heads superiors and subordinates is necessary in such joint consultations subordinates help managers develop realistic objectives since they know best what they are capable of achieving managers help subordinates raise their sights towards higher objectives by showing willingness to help them overcome obstacles and confidence in subordinates abilities fourth revision of organizational structure when the goals for each individual are reset under mbo there is a considerable change in the job description of various positions this may call for a revision of the existing organization structure the organization charts and manuals should be suitably amended to depict the change brought about by the introduction of management by objectives the job description of various jobs must be defined with their objectives responsibilities and authorities they must clearly lay down the relationship with other job positions in the organization 5 matching objectives and resources it should be noted that without a proper balance between the objectives and the resources the achievement of goals will be difficult hence the superiors must ensure combination of goals with available resources all managers at various levels require to these resources to accomplish their goals by relating these resources to the goals themselves superiors can better see the most effective and most economical way of allocating them 6 conducting periodic progress reviews management by objectives ensures periodic meetings between the superior and the subordinate to review the progress towards the goal attainment for this the superior must establish checkpoints or standards of performance for evaluating the progress of subordinate the review should be held monthly or quarterly these reviews serve as a built-in feedback mechanism for an mbo system since individual or group goals are specifically defined usually in quantifiable terms employees can compare their progress at review time against the specified goals This periodic checkup allows managers and employees to see whether they are on targets or whether some change is necessary. During the review, managers and employees decide what problems exist and what they can do to resolve them. 7. Performance appraisal. While informal performance appraisal of a subordinate is done by his immediate superior almost every day, formal appraisal at periodic interval, usually once or twice a year, does ensure that a thorough evaluation of a manager's performance is done and his achievements are carefully analyzed against the background of prevailing circumstances and given objectives performance appraisal 
The design and the format of the performance review form will depend on the nature of the enterprise. Performance appraisal can serve three purposes. Feedback to employees concerning their actual performance. Provide the basis for identifying more effective job behavior. Supply information to managers relevant to future job assignments and to compensation decisions. 8. Feedback. On the basis of overall evaluation, the feedback is provided to higher level of hierarchy. Feedback information helps in taking decisions to make necessary changes in MBO program and to shape goals for the next year. The MBO cycle repeats itself on an annual basis. Benefits of management by objectives. Management by objectives is a comprehensive management planning and controlling technique and is bound to affect the entire organization, structure, culture. Management by objectives calls for regulating the entire process of managing in terms of meaningful, specific and variable objectives at different levels of managerial hierarchy. It stimulates meaningful action for better performance and higher accomplishment. It is closely associated with the concept of decentralization. In the year 1954, Drucker noted that the first requirement in managing managers is management by objectives and self-control. The main advantages of MBO are better management of organizational activities. By applying MBO, organizational resources and activities can better be managed which shows improved results. How the performance of an organization can improve through MBO can be classified on the following five assumptions laid down by L.M. Prasad. These are clarity of objectives, role clarity, periodic feedback of performance, participation of managers in the management process, clarity in organizational action. MBO tends to provide the key result areas where organizational efforts are needed. A key factor in objective setting is the external environment in which the organization operates and any change in the external environment should be considered very carefully at the time of the objective setting. Provides maximum personal satisfaction. MBO provides maximum opportunity for personal satisfaction. It is possible due to two closely related phenomena. One, participation of individuals in goal setting. Two, Rational Performance Appraisal People are involved in goal setting and it is a source of inspiration to them. MBO provides guidelines for appraising performance. Therefore, there is no room for any partiality. Basis for Organizational Change MBO initiates and stimulates organizational change and it provides framework for planned change. Due to change in internal and external factors, a change is required in any organization. Sometimes change is resisted by the people in the organization. But by the MBO, the changing process becomes easier because there is a constant interaction between superiors and the subordinates. Less resistant on the part of the subordinates frequently review the situation. The other benefits of MBO are it increases the effectiveness of management process. It effectively and efficiently uses the human resources. It encourages commitment towards goal attainment. It is a self-appraisal and self-management technique which leads through self-motivation and control. It inbuilt the result-oriented attitude in employees. It is a path which encourages personal development and provides opportunities for career development. It reduces duplication of efforts. It advocates trust, cooperation and supportiveness that are central to human nature. It develops a greater sense of identification in employees. Failures of MBO and some recommendations. Despite all its, despite all its advantages, an MBO system has a number of weaknesses. Most of them are due to shortcomings in applying the MBO concepts. Failure to teach the philosophy of MBO is one of the weaknesses of certain programs. Many organizations have been overwhelmed by problems of MBO. Some of the problems are present in MBO system itself and others emerge due to wrong implementation. Some of the common problems of MBO are as follows. 
First, incomplete understanding of MBO philosophy. Managers involved in practicing MBO sometimes do not understand as to what purpose it serves, how the objectives are set and the performance is appraised, how the results will be analyzed and how the organization will be benefited. Second, poor planning and lack of guidelines. One of the major weaknesses often associated with MBO is poor planning of the program prior to implementation. Implementers must know how to involve personnel at all levels of management and obtain their support. Like any other kind of planning, MBO cannot work if those who are expected to set goals are not provided any guidelines. Third, difficulty in setting objectives. Objective setting is the prime step in MBO process. It requires verifiable objectives against which performance may be appraised. Setting of objectives is more difficult in some areas, especially where they cannot be presented in quantitative form. In such cases, it becomes difficult to qualify the performance and compare that with the objectives. Effective goal setting requires proper study of human nature, behavior and expectations to set attainable and reasonable objectives. Fourth, Inflexibility management by objectives may tend to introduce inflexibility in the organization. Since goals are set in every six months or one year, the superior may not like to modify them in between because of fear of resistance from the subordinates. Koons and Verich state, it is foolish and dangerous for a manager to strive for a goal that has been made obsolete by revised corporate objectives changed premises or modified policies. Fifth, increases pressure and frustration on the subordinates. According to some critics, MBO actually increases pressure on the subordinates and sometimes MBO creates frustration among managers. This is due to a reason that a many organizations could not implement MBO properly and even the organization is not able to work with its old system and b Introduction of MBO arouses high expectations in young managers. They are overenthusiastic in making rapid change in terms of growth and profitability for organization and career development for themselves. If rate of change is slower than expected, then they feel frustrated. 6. Short-term nature of goals. In most MBO programs, managers set goals for the short run, usually for a year or even less. This is dangerous for the long-term development of the organization. It is also found that strategic goals are displaced by operational goals. 7. Quantitative bias. In order to have verifiable and measurable goals, managers overuse quantitative goals and attempt to force the use of numbers in areas where they are not applicable. They may also downgrade important goals that are difficult to state in quantitative terms or end results. 8. Time consuming. A great deal of time to carefully set objectives at all levels of the organization is required in MBO. Initially to build confidence in subordinates, in the new system, superiors may have to hold many meetings. The formal, periodic progress and final review sessions are also time consuming. So, MBO is a time consuming process. 9. Increases paperwork. MBO programs introduce a tidal wave of newsletters, instructions, booklets, training manuals, questionnaires, performance data, and reports into the organization. To know of what is going on in the organization, managers may demand regular reports and data in writing. Thus, MBO imposes burdensome paperwork. 10. Lack of follow up. Lack of follow-up by the superior at the appropriate time is another hurdle in the successful implementation of MBO. It is most easy to procrastinate. The superior must get to the subordinate at the appropriate time. The subordinate should be prepared to tell the boss exactly what has been accomplished and how. Some of the other weaknesses of MBO are as follows. It can be used as a threat by overzealous managers. Managers turn MBO into a sham and start playing games. The program is used as a whip to control employee performance. Top managers provide inadequate support. It may also lead to tug of war 
in which the subordinate tries to set the lowest possible targets and superior the highest. Conclusion In this session, we discussed about the process, characteristics and weaknesses of an approach followed in the management process called the Management by Objectives or the MBO. The essence of an MBO system lies in the establishment of common goals by the managers and their subordinates acting together. Each person's major areas of responsibility are clearly defined in the terms of measurable expected results or objectives. These objectives are used by subordinates in planning their work and by both subordinates and their superiors for monitoring progress. Performance appraisals are conducted jointly on continuing basis with provisions for regular periodic reviews. To conclude, we can say MBO involves managers and subordinates in jointly establishing specific objective and periodically reviewing progress towards meeting those targets. Thank you.